Hi, I'm Pandu from Free FinCal, and on this video, let's talk about how to get the maximum benefit from uh, the National Pension Scheme. But before I do that, I have uh, released a survey uh, for uh, clients of fee-only financial planners. So if you are working with a fee-only financial planner, either from my list or elsewhere, please uh, check this link and uh, let us know what your experience has been. So it will help uh, them become better. It will help me also uh, uh, understand what clients actually want. So what is the best way to use the National Pension Scheme is to not use it at all. That I have been very clear and I keep saying this. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but of course, not many people take me seriously and they uh, worry too much about that 50,000 rupees additional tax saving. The reality is, as I, as I had uh, explained uh, in, a, in the video on a small investor syndrome, the reality is that most people have to invest, at least most of the people watching this video, I'm pretty much sure have to uh, invest at least 50,000, close to 50,000 rupees for retirement totally, including EPF, NPS deduction, whatever it is. Uh, per month and uh, so therefore they should not be worrying too much about 50,000 uh, uh, invested in NPS a year that's actually a small fry. Uh, that is the reason why I say avoid NPS don't worry about that extra benefit from NPS but uh, if you are still if you still have NPS uh, we have opened an NPS just for this 50,000 stack saving um, uh, well, it's essentially it's a, you're going to lock up unnecessarily uh, some money. Uh, please don't contribute more to it and uh, just to get that extra pension. You can always buy that pension elsewhere uh, by using money from elsewhere. So don't worry about that. My suggestion is to uh, uh, as for asset allocation, if you are doing if you are using NPS only for tax saving, uh, uh, have an asset allocation without any equity in it. Just have the uh, uh, good amount of gilts and uh, some corporate bonds however way you want to play it uh, if you're if you're comfortable with gilts you can have uh, something like 70% uh, gilts 30% uh, corporate bonds or 50 50 however way you want to play it just don't have any equity in it there's no need for it you can have equity elsewhere in mutual fund stocks and so on that gives you the full freedom to manage the risk in equity once it's there in equity uh, in NPS it's not uh, manageable it's more rigid so that's the reason why I say that so that's the first category of people who have opened an NPS account only for that 50,000 rupees additional saving. The second category uh, is people like me who are uh, central government and state government uh, employers. I have a huge NPS corpus and um, uh, the currently the uh, asset allocation for most state government and central government employers is 85% in fixed income. Most of that fixed income is gilts. Just a little bit corporate bond exposure, I think. I don't exactly remember the uh, ratio. Uh, just 15% equity allocation. My suggestion is, although central government and state government employees can now change the asset allocation, kindly do not do it. Keep it the same. It's a very good asset allocation. It is given reasonably anywhere between 8 to 9% roughly uh, returns. Uh, my, I have been an NPS subscriber since August 2006. Uh, so that's been doing very well for me. Uh, in fact, it has been doing so well that I have to make sure uh, my equity allocation is higher at 60% uh, uh, and push money into equity. Uh, every time the equity does not have a good year, then I have trouble of NPS overtaking my equity allocation. So it's been a wonderful performer. That is a very good asset allocation. Don't change it. Keep it primarily fixed income. Don't change asset allocation just because somebody gives you the freedom to do it. Don't. There's no need. You have uh, equity uh, in mutual funds and stocks uh, elsewhere if you want manage the, uh, that uh, efficiently and you should be good enough. Uh, that's my uh, suggestion again. So my, the asset allocation advice is typically the same. Uh, there's another kind of um, uh, NPS subscriber. Well, there are two kinds. The, the corporate employee, uh, there the they would be getting uh, messages or uh, information from the HR saying that they are going to introduce NPS and uh, they want you to shift your EPF to NPS. Do not do that. Stick to your EPF for as long as you possibly can unless you are forcibly allow, uh, converted. Don't do that. EPF is a fantastic liquid instrument. It gives you nice solid returns. You don't need market linked uh, investment unnecessarily as NPS. NPS is a market linked mutual fund so you don't need it. 
oops uh, uh, excuse me the power went sorry I hope that's okay so uh, don't do that uh, so uh, you can stick to EPS there's no need for you to convert it if you have already converted from EPF to NPS then again the same asset allocation pattern will hold stick treat NPS as a pure fixed income instrument market linked fixed income debt mutual fund and don't have equity have equity elsewhere from um, also there's one other category people who are having a super animation scheme and uh, they may be asked by the employer to convert from super animation to uh, NPS that is a good move in my opinion you can change it because NPS has got a lot more uh, uh, flexibility the super animation rules the taxation rules are not good you you have to pay tax on the amount that you withdraw and uh, there's also uh, I don't remember one third two thirds uh, kind of uh, the man annuity requirement is two thirds uh, one third I think so in, in that I so I believe NPS is a better option so you can choose that instead of the superannuation scheme so that essentially convert uh, covers all the gamut of all possible NPS subscribers of course if you have uh, chosen NPS as an individual without worrying about 50,000 taxation and uh, think of think of it as a retirement product all right that's fine but to think of it as a debt oriented retirement product and invest in equity elsewhere you can manage the risk better you can book profit book loss you can rebalance back and forth all those things can be done um, in equity elsewhere and that's why I strongly recommend it and that's in my opinion the best use of NPS the second best use of NPS the first best use of NPS is to avoid it if you still have it the second best use is to treat it as a debt oriented uh, mutual fund that is uh, uh, that is the reason I mean I, I uh, to me that's important because I have that NPS as a as a, as a bedrock of my plat uh, portfolio I can uh, peacefully focus on my equity allocation that's important for me also please recognize NPS will not give you a pension this is totally dumb the name is completely dumb it's misleading it's just going to accumulate money for you in a market linked manner um, all you need to get a pension if, if at all you want a pension uh, like I, I've ta talked about in income flooring video you're gonna you just take the money and buy a pension from anywhere the same thing NPS is also going to do there's nothing special about NPS. This is the problem. People have been sold uh, wrong stuff, uh, misleading things about pension schemes and uh, so on. So that's what I wanted to say in this video. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Thank you as always for listening. Please don't forget to fill out that survey if you're working with a fee-only financial planner. Bye-bye.